metal festivals. They are awesome. They're some of the most fun you'll ever have, but they're also brutal, exhausting, and quite frankly, painful experiences that can test the very limits of what it means to be a human being living in the 21st century. Indeed, many a bright-eyed headbanger enter the festival grounds feeling like they're in absolute paradise, only for them to wake up when it's all over, feeling like they'd been run over by several freight trains while a hammer and tongs smashed against their heads. Even still, it's absolutely worth it, and you'll be laying in that crippled comatose state for a few days with a giant smile on your face when all is said and done. There's many reasons why you should go to a metal festival, but those are all covered in my other videos. Today we are going to focus on things at metal festivals that suck, because what's the point in having a YouTube channel if I'm not going to use it to complain about stuff? These are things that are all pretty universal at all festivals, they all just kind of come with the territory of putting on this type of event, so don't take it as a warning to avoid anywhere but it's best to know what you're getting yourself into. And it's fun to complain, so let's start doing some of that. The first thing that sucks about metal festivals is how much standing you'll be doing. You're constantly either watching bands or walking to the next stage, plus walking to your tent and back, moshing, waiting in lines. It's a lot of legwork, and if you're not used to being active, you're gonna get wiped out pretty quickly. So you may wanna start training for a marathon before heading off to your festival. Speaking of standing, the next thing that sucks about festivals is having to wait in line for pretty much everything. Waiting to get your wristband, waiting to get into the actual festival, waiting to walk around people, waiting for food, waiting for merch, waiting for the bathrooms. If you're at one of the bigger festivals like Hellfest, it can feel like you're standing in line pretty much for the entire duration of the festival. It depends on the size, of course, but especially at the larger festivals, plan for pretty much everything to take about 45 minutes to do. Speaking of lines, you know that really cool festival shirt you wanna buy? Well, you know who else wants to purchase it? About 50,000 other metalheads who are mostly all gonna get in line at the same time you want to. Festival merch lines usually take a good bit of time to get through, especially on the first day of the festival. If you have bands you wanna see early on, it can be challenging to find a good time. But if you really want the most popular items, it's best to just stick it out right away. You could be like me and wait till one of the later days when the merch lines have died down by a lot, but then you run the risk that they'll run out of all the cool shit. Speaking of money, something I haven't talked about on this channel yet is pay cards, or cash cards, or tokens, or whatever money program your festival uses. Many festivals utilize some type of pay card system that you'll use to pay for most things during the event. They say it's to make it convenient for attendees and prevents people accidentally dropping their money, which is true, but it also makes it really easy to keep ordering drinks without realizing how much you're spending. It can also be a huge pain in the ass to reload these things with more of your hard-earned cash, whether it's a faulty app or having to wait for some kiosk taking time out of your busy schedule of headbanging. These things can be annoying, especially if the festival has a bad system set up. It can be nice to not have to carry your wallet and all your money around with you, but sometimes you want a damn beer and don't have the patience for a lagging app. Next thing I should mention is thievery. Festivals have a lot of people at them, and no matter how awesome and friendly most of the crowd are, unfortunately there's probably still going to be a couple assholes in the herd. In my personal experience, it hasn't been much of a problem, but plenty of people have had things stolen from their tents before. It's never happened to me, but I have had some friends have items of theirs go missing. I wouldn't say it's a big major problem to worry about, but it does suck when it happens. Just try to be smart with your stuff, don't leave important or expensive things laying around, and if you want you can get a lock for your tent too. A lot of festivals have lockers for rent as well. Really it shouldn't happen and isn't something you should be super worried about, but at the same time try not to leave your wallet stuffed with cash out in plain sight. That being said, I have had way more instances of people losing things and then having them lost and found later on. Now that we've segued into the campground, let's talk about the downsides of festival camping. The campground is an epic place where young vibrant metalheads are grinded in a savage beast more like orcs than humans. That said, they're not a place for those looking to get a lovely quiet night's rest and enjoy their beauty sleep. For one thing, you're sleeping on the ground, which already comes with its own set of issues. Add into that the sound of thousands of metal barbarians partying throughout the night, screaming, cheering, blasting music, and many other unspeakable disgusting things we won't mention here. And if you're sleeping in a tent, you don't have much protection from, say, oh, I don't know, a drunk Scandinavian falling on you while you sleep. No matter how tough and savage you may be, a few days of festival camping will drain just about anyone. And for you all not camping, but staying at a hotel, you'll avoid all of those issues. But there's still downsides to this as well. Mainly having to wait for your shuttle at the end of the night, after you've been running around, headbanging, and moshing all day, drinking in the hot sun, 
getting slammed into by shirtless maniacs, you're going to want to get to your bed as soon as possible. Unfortunately, you'll probably have to wait at least another 45 minutes or more between waiting for your shuttle and getting through the traffic. Personally, this part is exhausting to me and I'd much rather just pass out in a tent, surrounded by people yelling slayer and breathing fire. Whether you're camping or staying in a hotel, one thing everyone has to deal with is the weather. And if you're someone like me, this can really make or break your experience. Festivals seem to enjoy being either too hot or too cold, depending on how it's feeling that year. When it's too hot, you'll just feel sweaty and disgusting, not to mention smell wonderful. There often isn't much shade at these festivals, especially in front of the main stages. Combine that with drinking and extend that over several days. It's intense. Hydrate bring electrolytes. On the opposite end, when it rains, it is absolutely fucking miserable. Everything becomes more difficult to do. Walking through the dirt for 20 minutes to get to the next stage becomes 45 minutes of sledging through soaking mud while you're soaked to the point you feel like Gollum. Some bands can be pretty epic to see live in the rain, but when you know you're gonna be going back to your tent and are gonna have to put up with this for another few days, it sucks. And it can suck even more if your tent breaks in the middle of the storm. Or if all of your clothes and everything you brought with you gets soaked in the rain. Or if you're watching a band and someone moshing in the mud next to you sends a huge chunk right in your face. Especially if you've traveled from far away and invested a lot to get here, the rain fucking sucks. But one thing is for certain, whether it rains or burns, metal festivals are dirty places. If it rains, well, you already have a guess about that. But even if it doesn't, one thing first-timers probably won't think about is dust. If your festival is outside in a field, which it probably is, then if you've got people moshing in that field, you're gonna have dust. Man-made dust storms that get everywhere. And if you're in this situation for several days, you're gonna be pretty marinated in dirt by the end of it. Expect some pretty gross showers and a few days of black stuff coming out of your nose. Also, if the dust gets intense, it might get difficult to breathe at times if you're near the pit. A lot of festivals do try to water it down to help with that, but I'd recommend some type of mask or bandana to help prevent you from breathing like Darth Vader after the festival's over. Not only that, but your footwear will probably Probably be pretty beat down and if it rains you'll likely end up getting mud and water in your tent which is super fun and since we're talking about things that can be gross and unpleasant it's time to talk about the bathroom situation I think most people are aware that you don't go to a metal festival seeking the most hygienic state-of-the-art pristine shitters every festival has porta potties and if the festival is good they'll have them regularly cleaned but even then an outhouse is like a box of chocolates you never know what you're gonna get. The good news is that many festivals do set up actually decent to pretty nice restrooms within the festival grounds. There may be a bit of a line, but at least you'll be able to take a shit with some dignity left. For the ladies, from what I've been told over the years, the women's restrooms are usually treated far more humanely than ours. Also, if you find a tree or a bush that's off in the corner somewhere in the campground and think it would be a lovely place to rest, you might want to make sure the ground isn't soaked in urine before you sit down there. And now that we've gotten the disgusting part out of the way, let's talk about something a bit more entertaining. If you're a party animal and a drinker, you're gonna want to go fucking crazy at festivals. Understandably so, and you definitely should, but it can be really easy to get carried away and go farther than you can handle. Every festival I've ever been to, I've seen metalheads passed out in random places the first day when the event is just getting started. Which I mean, hey, have fun all you want. But my point is that it can be really easy to get so wasted you miss a lot of what you wanted to see. For example, maybe you decide to party all night, taking shots of some mystery vodka with a bunch of random Norwegians, forgetting that you'd already paid for a fairly expensive activity the next morning, only to sleep through the entire thing. Or maybe even partying so hard the night before that you end up sleeping through the entire last day of the festival. Also, putting yourself in that much intoxication will leave you feeling even more haggard as you drag yourself back home afterward. Unfortunately, getting too wasted isn't the only way to miss bands at metal festivals. And actually, most of the time, it's literally impossible to see every single band that's playing. Most festivals have multiple stages spaced out around the event, and the big ones will have often two, maybe even three bands playing at the same time. With around 100 bands playing over a couple of days, it just wouldn't be possible to give everyone their own time not during anyone else. This can get frustrating, as it's usually not till much closer till the event do they release the schedule, and then you discover that the two bands you wanted to see the most are playing at the same time. Like when Gojira and King Diamond played at the exact same 
same time in Hellfest 2019, which I'm still not over. This depends on which festival you're at, and smaller ones with two stages probably won't have this problem, but for the bigger festivals, it's a guarantee you're gonna have to make some difficult choices. All right, you made it. You survived. You're beat up, sunburnt, dirty, caked in mud, spent all your money, tired, hungover, have random bruises, and are tired of smelling like a dead animal. All you want right now is to get home with your own comforts. Well, hopefully it all goes smoothly because the journey home is where things can really suck. Things like flights getting canceled, buses breaking down, road closures and traffic accidents, train strikes, Icelandic volcanoes fucking up air traffic, especially if you came from far away and have a very long journey to get back home. Inconveniences when you're this tired and drained can be extremely stressful. True story, when a buddy of mine was leaving Metal Days one year, the bus he was on broke down and left all of them stranded at some random gas station in Austria for around 12 hours. Once the bus was finally ready, they had to continue the rest of the journey. That shit sucks. That's not to say any of these things will definitely happen, but man, they suck when they do. But let's say everything goes smoothly. Let's say the metal gods Lemmy and Dio have blessed you with a perfect festival experience and none of these things I've mentioned happened to you at all. Well, that's awesome, but there is still one final thing about metal festivals that really, really sucks, and no matter what you do, it cannot be avoided. It's something that stays with you long after it's all over and you're back home in your normal life. And that, my friends, is post-festival depression. PFD, as it's called in the medical institutions. This is a very real thing, and it describes the strange, uncomfortable, and depressing transition from your festival life to the normal world. After only being around metalheads for several days, now you're around normal people who aren't in black band shirts and have short hair looking at you like you're strange. You're confused as nobody around you is drunkenly screaming Slayer. There's no stages you got a plan to walk to. You're confused why McDonald's won't accept your Vakken cash card. You wake up in the middle of the night to find yourself moshing around your living room by yourself in your sleep, looking at yourself in the mirror and longing to just hear someone say those words, LET ME SEE YOUR FUCKING HORNS! Getting home after a festival, you're so grateful to have your own food and bed and comforts for a few days, but very quickly you'll be desperate to be back there and do it all again. You'll miss the freedom, the fun, the bonding, and of course the constant metal. Unfortunately, it happens to us all. There will always be a place in your heart that yearns to be back there. Post-festival depression is a serious condition that can affect metalheads during periods of low decibels and alcohol. If you or a loved one is suffering from PFD, please buy them a ticket to the next available metal festival immediately. Metal festivals are definitely not the easiest experiences in the world, but for how many issues can and do come up, they are 100% worth it, and the good far outweighs the bad and hopefully none of the information in this video scared you off from attending one. If it did, then please watch my other videos highlighting why festivals are so amazing and are worth the hardship highlighted here. Anyway, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next video.